Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast, where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Nah. Hey. Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Pause. Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Are you, you know how we do. We always yeah, keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever we want to do, no consequences, baby. So what's that about? What you mean? Why you in your feelings, big fella? Change the song, eh? Somebody about to catch a two-piece out here, and I ain't talking about lemon pepper, nigga. Huh? Police! Somebody help! Up in the blues! Rick, please! Help us, Ricky! I'm hurt! Uh, uh. Now listen, Ricky, you know I've been waiting for this, nigga. You got hit by a white boy in Canada, nigga. You let a Canadian beat you up, man. You know I'm coming for you, Ricky. m m m m Maybach music! You see me out here? I'm still chilling, man. I'm unfazed. <laughs> yo, Rick, yo, Rick. What? Oh, shit. I mean, I'm on, I'm, I'm on phase, man. Is it done? Yeah. Good. Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. Well, I'm your host, Harrison. Yeah. 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 us for another episode. Been rocking with us. And welcome, welcome to the 8 Morning 92 Podcast. As y'all seen from the video, that gives y'all a little preview of what we will be going over today um ross decided that uh dick riding will not make you like them you will not be like us uh the canadians let him know that full to the fullest but um we can go ahead and jump right up into the topics today man we ain't gotta do no catching up how everything has been i'm alive so let's just jump straight up into these topics uh ricky rose step in front of the judge today ross is what we like to say when dick riding a beef that you ain't involved then goes wrong as you can see ross went to vancouver trying to so as we can see from the video ross is a perfect example of when dick eden gone wrong you go to canada trying to play kendrick's diss to something for it when it's because ross you had your own diss it was called white champagne or something like that champagne something but you had your own disc. You go to Canada playing Kendrick's disc, and you walk off stage thinking they wasn't going to press you. So as you see, Ross got off stage and boom, got clock right in his shit. And from there, all hell broke loose. Um, Ross, you know, they, they tried that biggest boss card and you walked your fat ass up there like a lemon pepper stepper. And the only people that really need their condolences is the security guard. Now, to be 6'9 and get handled the way you're getting handled right here is just just sad right here. Like, my dog is getting, like, his ass whooped. And, like, it's just, it's just sad. Like, look at him. Like, boom, boom, boom. Like, they fucking him up. And he just thinking, man, they ain't paying me enough for him. But if you Ross, fat ass, and you see this man right here getting his ass Hand it to him. You pay for this. What do you think they're going to do to your melted bowl of ice cream ass? So, I mean, it's just, you know, like, Ross, I've said from the beginning of this whole thing, like, you haven't really made any sense in this whole beef in general. Like, you just, you talking about French Montana, you adding on to shit for what? Um, we watching you. We seeing you. You looking like a clown. And it's just not reflective of, like, what's going on with you. Like, why did you feel that you needed to go to Canada? Like you thought you was good with that shit. And then on top of that, you know, you getting cornered. Your dudes out here fighting for you, Ross. You out here looking straight hoish. Like your dudes is out here squaring up with everybody. You hiding behind people saying stuff like, yeah, the biggest hustler, hustling, hustling. Your dudes out here getting knocked. The DJ coming in. I guess he tried to come out there and throw a record at the motherfucker. They stumped him out, whooped his motherfucking ass. And then here come Biggie again. I guess the adrenaline kicked in and said, hold on, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. Well, you was, nigga, because they got you again. And what they don't show is Ross sneaked his ass out the back and he was just up out of there. Like, it comes to that point to where you see stuff like this and it's just like, what the fuck going on? Like, what, what, what made you think that you could go 
into somebody's backyard playing a diss that's arguably the song of the summer it is up there with what back to back did to an extent to why i'm not really i can't really sit there and say that i feel bad for drake you know of course when your team lose you want to always rep your team and you don't want to sit there and say um anything that can go against it but when drake did back to back they was playing it everywhere everybody was boss bitch and wife and niggas Twitter fingers, uh, trigger fingers, turn to Twitter fingers, all that type shit. Song of the summer. So this is what it is. You gotta, you gotta take that L. But that's between Kendrick and Drake. This ain't got shit to do with Ross. And on top of that, you had your own, you had your own this song. So why go up there and play somebody else's this song? Like out of anybody, you seem the corniest in all this whole beef situation. Ross, like you really. And then to go up there and get your ass whooped and then have your homeboys get their ass whooped. And you, you, you know, I'm a, let me change that up. You got knocked in your face, realize that you was going to have to exert some stamina to fight, realize your fat ass ain't working out that much. Like you trying to proclaim, oh, enough, ain't enough Bella Rose to keep you from losing your breath. And then you let your whole crew get your ass whooped, get their ass whooped, and you just ran off. And I get it. You know, you got to protect the bag. And maybe this is why I'm not cut out for certain parts of the aspects of that life. Like if I'm out and my partners is getting beat and let's just say I am the LeBron James or shit. Fuck it. Then, you know, just like 300, we got to go down with the ship together. I don't care. Like I already got hit. We already lost the fight. We ain't going to win it. Like I don't get what more am I staving off by not helping them out. Like, your DJ got his ass whooped. He got knocked out. The guy, the the security, let's not even call him security. That was just like a warm up bench for all the kickboxers. Uh, Ross, the yeah DJ, uh, ended up taking a siesta. He would try to be Sam Sneak. Somebody sneaked his ass, and you just snuck out the back. And ironically, the person who punched you was a white boy. All that white boy, white boy, white boy, it 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 backfired on your ass big time. Now, the thing I want to get to is now that this has happened, you know, and of course Drake went and like the ass whooping, and Ross come back on there and act like nothing happened. Vancouver, I love you. Does this lead to maybe some type of Biggie and Pac retaliation? Because you know this wasn't anything from Drake's camp. This was just you go to Vancouver playing a song that from L.A. to Vancouver, you got Kendrick, you got Drake. Drake is from Toronto. Yes, but Drake has represented Canada. And then you see what happened to Ross in Canada. Now, when Drake goes to Miami, is there any retaliation against him? Or does this since it's become violent? Does it have to end in violence? That's just the only thing I kind of wonder. And on top of that, saying that Drake and Kendrick kept it in the realm of safe environment, just emceeing, Ross took it to a whole nother level and escalated it to a point to where it got violent because you was out there dick eating on another person's song. And then, you know, Metro and them had a concert. They had to cancel the concert in Canada. You know, it's Canada off limits for people. Uh, what happens when Drake comes to the West Coast? It's just, it has a feeling that it's going to end in bloodshed. I hope not. But, you know, it didn't until fights get involved. And now somebody going to want to get their get back for what happened to Ross. Somebody obviously going to want to get their get back on Kendrick. And it's just turned into a way messier situation because of that. Because people just all piled on on two people's beef. And I just hope it doesn't turn down to that. I hope it doesn't get to that point because at that point, then people going to sit there and say, what are we doing? What, uh, what, why did we let it escalate to this point? And we all know what happened. We could have stopped it. We could have did anything, but we love turmoil. We love ignorance. We love violence. And we love death. Whether it's quiet as it kept, 
we may hate the funerals and all that type saying it but we love killing motherfuckers i don't care what nobody says i don't care what anything i think it gets our blood born to see a triumphant story where you take down one person or another i mean war what's the whole purpose of war killing and triumph and standing up top uh when you see action movies you don't see nobody sitting there, there talking it out hell no bang bang bang, bang killing people what makes somebody an action star is the most bodies and stuff they can kill what had killmonger uh what was the most famous thing about him was a keloids on his body for all the kills he's taking down like you you get your reputation from murder i mean what made chicago what it was was murder was all the murders is happening you go on twitter you assassinate people's character without even knowing shit so um yeah, that, I think that's what we're aiming to. And then when what happens and people are going to sit there and say it's bigger than that, I'm tired of this. We not because we could have stopped it, but we egged it on and I hope it doesn't get to that point. So, um, Ross, you're an idiot for going there thinking you was untouchable, thought you was bulletproof. Uh, if I was a guy that got my ass whooped, Ross would be paying me either $3 million or I would be suing the fuck out of Maybach Music for that ass whooping i'm talking about he was about six nine at a certain point they was throwing naruto style haymaker kicks at him before. it was like he was fighting goku or something the way his ass was just they was just flying god damn i'm talking about he you should not be that big getting your ass whooped by mere little humans like a bunch of davids beating up goliath so um hope nothing happens from it uh not like us video came out i can officially say hated it the um the video made it corny to me i feel like at this point kendrick is going to get your money let's get this up but he is going to override the fuck out of this i personally didn't care for the song the pop out concert made me recite the song but i still don't care for the song i mean you know what side i ride on i mean you can see the owl in the background uh ovo owly back there but when the video came out i just felt like the song came out in may you've milked the fuck out of this whole song per se now you got the remix coming out and not like us behind the scenes dvd they're not like us popsicles they're not like us animated film like Damn, my nigga, is you afraid to make another song or something? You afraid to make another hit single that ain't got attached to this nigga name? That's what it feels like me with all this not like us shit. Like, it's running the shit to the fucking ground. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it. I get it, I get it. I get it, I get it. But anyways, um, like I said, I just thought, I saw the video. It was all right. I didn't think the video was anything special. Um, it's Family Matters. It's still the best song, the best diss track the best video in this whole beef but you know like i said and i mean they put the whitney thing out there only thing he did was take some of the things drake said he's not proven any of the shit that he said on any of his diss tracks about drake that's why the shit is cornered in me as well that's why i feel like the shit got a pass never seen 11 year old daughter never seen any of the other stuff that he said in his tracks about drake on meet the grams euphoria any of that but all the stuff drake said and family has a lot of stuff kendrick is fed into but because he had mustard on the beat and the song was catchy oh the pedophile shit mainly i mean what is a pedophile stuff you just said some shit and ran with it and you got people out here a town stump into a certified pedophile anthem you said that line about go to atlanta none of the atlanta people spoke up or did anything you don't even see them playing that song um they still ride with drake you see him at the all white michael rubin party so not kendrick didn't have to defend himself on anything but he had a mustard beat so you know of course it's, it's who it's the battle of the lies who could tell the best lie who felt like defending it so um i just felt that you know public perception is get drake the fuck out of here but you know he's still number one still on top i still have it you know heart part six nobody wanted to say nothing about so like i said had the most disses out and over your aubrey like i said not like us uh getting played out getting corny the video kind of like exhausting everything kendrick put out a fucking song like god damn and i seen like they said not like us is nominated for a grammy which is crazy to me like three weeks after it come out nominated for a grammy but like he said kendrick just opened his mouth someone go get him a grammy right now this is what you wanted to happen but you had to do it for aubrey 
So, hey, it is what it is. Um, update on the Hawk Tour, girl. Uh, I wanted to show that uh, that girl was not a teacher. She worked at like a mill or something like that. And update for me saying I feel bad for y'all getting that girl fired. Girl quit on her own. She about to try to use this fame and ride it. So all the sympathy I have for y'all. Um, all the sympathy I have for her, for y'all. I'm thinking y'all did something. Uh, no. Normal girl doing normal bird, catching a breeze, flying full of wind, doing bird things. So uh, skip all that clip of what she says she's doing right here. That's false. I worked in a spring plant for about 10 months, but I don't work there anymore. Did I really get fired from my job? That is false. I quit my job. What do you do now? Because now you have management, now you have a team. What are your plans moving forward? Like, do you want to still be the hook to a girl or do you want to like- I don't really want it? that to be like my image. Yeah. Like, hook to a girl. <laughs> I just, I don't see that being like, a my thing, thing. You know, yeah i don't want to be known as that manager and i hired an attorney i'm launching my merch store very soon and you'll be the first to know to get your official hop to a merch now is like you're gonna go to la you're gonna go to new york oh yeah do you think you see yourself like starting your own type of like show or podcast or are you just gonna be like an internet personality I think we're gonna do like a show and then we're just gonna be like on a bunch of podcasts and everything else in between. There's more to come, don't worry. So yeah, that's what the update for Hawk Tour Girls. So dismiss what I said on everything about the Hawk Tour Girls. She can't pull the fuck up out of here. Uh, get a little start and get a little fame. That don't mean sexually harass it on me, asking for no neck, no mouth, and nothing like that. I don't do, mean nothing, do nothing crazy. That just shows you that what it is to be a celebrity, what it is to garner fame, what it is to get income. It's no longer the hard work and skill and talent that it used to be. It's literally just 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, shoot up fame. And all of a sudden, this person has a lawyer. This person has a manager. This person wants to go to Hollywood. All of just saying the stupidest stuff. So um, if you'd have real talent, I would suggest putting your kids in trades. That's the real celebrity right now, having an actual fucking talent. Being the people that edit the videos, being the people that market it, being the people that um, make these AIs or do some of these productions or anything. Those are like the real celebrity have that because it's only so long that these people that are in front of the camera can only do that because without you, they can't do shit. They don't know how to market. They don't know how to manage. They don't know how to get their brand out there. That's what you're going to be. That's what that's what the famous talent is going to be. And you can work behind the scenes. and build your brand up that way because being in front of the camera is not like what it used to be especially when all eyes are on you 24 7. being a celebrity is not what it used to be when we were a kid and you would imagine it riding in limos taking pictures flashing when you would watch old tv shows like um boy meets world or you would watch uh family matters fresh prince anything that you beat a celebrity and what it is now it just looks depressing. So I would say be the person that develops the people in front of the cameras. That's the celeb right there behind the scenes incognito. Go back to where it was. Well, who's the man of the mystery? Not the people that everybody knows about. That's my take on that. Um, caught Beverly Hills Cop, Axel F. I will say this. The movie is OK. I think it's worth a look at if you're at home. It's one of those things for Netflix is good for. I don't know if I would have went and paid to go see. I definitely know I wouldn't went and pay to go see it, but it was a good movie. I thought it was good for what it was. Surprised because at first I wasn't going to watch it, but I was like, it's nothing on. It's a Friday. So I went and watched it. Eddie is still Eddie. I will say that Eddie is still iconic. I iconically great actor, iconically funny, iconically amazing um his banter his screen realization his impact in the film is just still there the movie screenplay and everything like that was in eh. um it did better than what i thought it was going to be it's kind of like what bad boys 4 was i thought bad boys 4 was better adapted for the times and the age of what the people were and i thought axel f was uh good for how eddie's age was and one thing I do like is when you have these, it is one thing I guess that people don't realize when you have these action stars, these movie stars, all these, um, all these 
like heroes like that, you realize they get older. So when you're making these movies and you want to remake or you want something to come for a film to come back 20, 30 years after the original or the last filming of it, you got to realize these people have families or you see the impacts of what they did when they were younger. So Eddie having a daughter in this film and him seeing like the life that he was when he was a young Axel Foley catches up to him and his parenting. And you see the effects of that. That was good in this movie. I don't need to see uh, you because it's kind of typical when you were the shit, a gunslinger, somebody with a great reputation, you were probably a shitty parent. And, you know, it has that element in this movie. But I think everybody, uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, always love anything that he's in. Um, Ince- Inception, Looper, shit, anything that he's, I'm trying to think of something else he was in. Uh, Anything jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt is in, I, I'm usually game to watch. Um, don't know who Eddie's daughter is. She looked familiar, but everything was good. Didn't run too long. And I like Eddie specifically when Eddie could cuss and go back to the the raunchy Eddie. The same with Martin. I don't like all this PC shit. I like it when y'all can make movies that don't have to do what's going on in the times of today. Just reflect to like what made those movies good was that you just made movies and you weren't trying to hit every wicket about what's culturally going on. And what's it like? The only thing he said was, um, about the, I'm a police. I've been black for longer shit like that. I mean, of course they try to put therapy and stuff in there, but I think that's, you know, a little bit easier to incorporate than maybe putting somebody, just maybe keeping up with the time, try to be politically correct. You got to have a uh, LGBTQ plus member in there, a part of storyline or just something weird that has nothing to do with it. Like a subplot that you make a sub that's part of a plot that ultimately has nothing to do with the actual plot. Did you got to make something that's racially uh tone for? No, you just, you get there, they get the cuss and they do simple shit. Um, John wick was good for this, but also suffered at it as the same way. It was just action. Now, I got a little too unrealistic with the action, but nonetheless, um, Eddie shined with that and the raunchiness and the cussing and the the comedic delivery timing of it made it worth the watch. So I would go encourage everybody to go watch Beverly Hills Cop Axel F on Netflix. It's worth the watch. No spoilers, mainly for Banks. Um, Shout out Banks. Shout out Najee back in the States. Happy to have you here. Congrats to all the success that's happening to you over in Japan. Um, so now we have some time has cooled down. And now shout out to Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, the rookie class that is um, been killing it. I wish uh, Cameron Brink would have still been healthy. Um, I want to say, what is the name of her let's see rakia jackson oh my god fine ass shout out to you shout out to your whole rookie class but shout out to angel reese and caitlin clark for making the uh all-star team this year caitlin clark the leading vote getter and if you see the the votes from it uh last year asia wilson which is the number two vote getter this year in the all-star race asia wilson had ninety-seven thousand votes for the all-stars game last year this year asia wilson has six hundred thousand votes and caitlin clark has seven hundred thousand and then angel reese topped in fifth with about three hundred thousand votes but if you can see the impact that people want to act like caitlin clark did not have on this game the highest vote getter last year for the WNBA's um all-star game was asia wilson at ninety seven thousand votes which means they weren't even getting a hundred thousand votes for their all-stars caitlin clark comes into the game as well as other people from this draft um class and it immediately shoots up like by four times like seven times honestly almost a million voters have voted for this all-star game and that should show people who wanted to keep them off of the olympic all-star team i mean the olympic team that they're, they brought the eyes to the WNBA. Your best player in the WNBA, Asia Wilson, could not crack 100,000 votes for your All-Star game. And this year alone with her on there, where she cracked 600 and 600,000 votes for the All-Star game, she still did not top the number one rookie 
and number one person in the the whole WNBA voting this year was Caitlin Clark for 700,000 votes for the All-Star. So Caitlin Clark alone brought almost 700,000 more voters to your game for the All-Star. The first one didn't even look like y'all had uh, NBA. This seemed like something a high school voter. So um, the impact alone of Caitlin Clark just needs to just be accepted and appreciated for what it is. But the impact of her and Angel Reese is being seen and highlighted to say that they are neck and neck for rookie of the year. Um, I will say that both of them are having great individual seasons. Angel Reese is currently, if she didn't already do it, 12 consecutive double doubles for the Chicago sky. Um, Right now, I want to say they are, um, what are they, like 12 and 8? So right now, yes, so 12 and 8 for the Chicago Sky. I might not. Let me check, make sure. They are 8 and 11. The Chicago Sky, yeah. 8 and 11, which they are right now, which they have been winning a hell of a lot more games. And then the Indiana Fever are 9 and 13, which, if you remember, the Indiana Fever started off at one and eight. So both ladies have started to turn around. They weren't playing good basketball at first just to get adjustment to the game, but um, they all have gotten better. Caitlin Clark recorded her first, the first ever triple double for rookie yesterday with fifth. Let me see where the status were so I can get it correct. 19 points, 13 assists, and 12 rebounds. Now with that, they also went ahead to beat the Liberty for the first time this season. Um, and if anybody knows, Caitlin Clark probably could have had this earlier if a lot of her teammates had hit already. Aaliyah Boston is also on the all-star team, which she was a number one draft pick as well. Both of them have been killing their team, has been coming around, and they are now fourth in the conference. So this is just going to show that their game has started to pick up the more and more they play, and they're going to be great ambassadors for the game. Now, with Rookie of the Year coming down, I want to just ask, who do you feel is more deserving of it now yes angel reese does get is a double double machine yes but there is some play of her now she did have one 27 and 12 uh game two for two for three pointers the other day i think for against the mystics i want to say friday but there is a lot to say that angel reese does grab a lot of her own rebounds but we knew her coming into the game does have a lot to do with her rebounding her offensive game would catch up that doesn't take away from the fact that she's still getting the job done. She's in a great, she's a great eraser. She is known for getting her boards and she is still putting up the points for what it is, but they aren't, some of those double doubles aren't translating into wins. I can't remember the game that it was that she played about a week or so ago. It was when the fever beat the mercury, but the double double that she was going for, push them out the game it might have been the mystics so don't quote me on that one but it might have been the mystics versus caitlin clark caitlin clark has struggled but caitlin clark is living up to everything that was hyped for being a number one pick in this draft um at the same time caitlin clark's teammates do let her down a lot of time for missing a lot of the open shots and passes or her stats will be a lot better than it comes from also for me if you were to ask me why I would probably give the nod to as much as I want to give it to Angel Reese. I love the black girl power. I love the black girl magic that's coming from. I love the inspiration that she is giving young black girls that are coming to this game and feeling inspired and seeing somebody look like them, have an attitude like them and walk around and be a boss like them. I will have to give it to Caitlin Clark because I mean, Caitlin Clark is getting triple team. They catch her 90 feet um she has a harder assignment and on top of that caitlin clark can shoot the ball and angel reese is playing under the rim and like i said a lot of those shots she getting is off her own miss so i just think that you have a harder game plan for caitlin clark that to me i feel that her game is a little bit hmm Angel Reese is doing a great job. Both of these ladies are doing a great job. I wouldn't be surprised if they had co-MVP uh, Rookie of the Year or shared the award. I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean, I wouldn't be disappointed either way. I just think for what is required, I think that Caitlin Clark being double, triple team, or being everybody's number one target, I think she has a harder assignment than 
Angel Reese. So I think for her stats to be what they are, I'm going to go with Angel, uh, Caitlin Clark. Plus right now, I mean, yeah, I can't say the record is better because 8 and 11 and 9 and 13 doesn't make – they both trash records under 500. But, um, yeah, I would go with that. So that is my take. What um that is my take for that. I think um I think um I think WNBA is in great hands. Shout out to the big three. I think sports for the summer has been a little bit more entertaining than what uh giving credit to. And right now the stalemate of things that's not happening. I th- I mean things not happening while we wait for football. And everything to kick back up. Shout out to Bronny. He had his first game. I want to say he had about four points. Um, probably still getting his feet wet. I see Bronny being a uh without the attitude. Um what is the dude named Dylan? Uh um, what is his name? For, he he played for Houston now. Um Dylan Brooks. Just from the way he plays, uh, Bronny doesn't really have an aggressiveness to him that wants to score, that wants to do everything. Bronny kind of sits there, kind of runs, and kind of lets the game find him. I kind of wish Bronny would be a little bit more aggressive. You're in the NBA now. I feel like we need to see your offensive game, and you need to go find it and get a little bit more instead of kind of just being so passive. Um, I think you need to use the aggressiveness to kind of spark your offensive game um and get that going i think your intangibles your leaping ability your quickness and everything like that will seem to fall in place once you kind of get going and get acclimated but when you kind of settle and fall into the game your athleticism and your your natural twitch and everything is still there but you're not in rhythm and i think once you start that out and get aggressive it's going to intensify because you're going to be in rhythm and your adrenaline is going to be going so um, we can wrap it there. I think that's a good spot to go. Everything has been going good. Like I said, uh, this is the only spot to get any information for the eight morning 92 podcast. Cause we're always going to keep it 100 right here. Probably going to keep the uh, IG page and all that down for probably like another month or so. So if you want to shoot the shit with me, get on the show, do anything like that, make sure you hit me up at the eight more than 92 podcast at gmail.com. Or you get, uh, hit me up by text if you got the phone number other than that this has been another episode thank you everybody thank you and everybody that joined me today this has been another episode of the eight more than 92 podcast we always keep on hunting peace should i wear this tech now with the high top mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or should i wear this uzi with my low top mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, i'll just wear these then Yo, 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 yo. Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 podcast where we always keep it 100. You heard none of them sound effects, did you? Oh, then how you coming, Glock? Okay. It's the 8 Morning 92 podcast. You know how we do. We always keep it 100. Who, who, who? Yeah, yeah.